Hi, Brigitte. How are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thanks to oh, you. Well, thank you. So exciting. Yes, it is very exciting. Right. So we're going to put some gel on your tummy. Yes. Nice, That's nice and warm. I do. I heat it up for my mommies. Oh, thank you so I much. Think That's actually very thoughtful of you. <laughs> the tummies are... I was are, expecting it to be like freezing. The tummy's the most sensitive when it comes to change in temperature. Right. Let's have a look. Right. So from an orientation point of view, this is the top of your tummy. This is your back. Your back at the bottom over here. Yes. Your head is on that side. Oh, I see. Okay. And your feet down on that side oh, right, yeah. from an orientation point of view. This black over here is your bladder. Okay. And that's what baby's been using to use as a trampoline. Oh, sure. <laughs> is this a, now a 2D scan? This is 2D, correct. Okay. What are the, what's the difference between a 2D scan and a 4D scan? Okay, so 2D is, is this black and white image. The 2D will never disappear. We'll always need the 2D. Yes. 2D can penetrate bone, go through, so to assess the organs inside, mm. we, we'd always need that. 4D, um, well, before 4D came out, there was 3D. Yeah. And 3D is a static image. Okay. Um, I've always explained it, 3D would be using a, a, as a photo. Yes. Where 4D is a video. Yes, yeah. So it's a live movement. But how you obtain the images are quite different. Um, if baby moves during a 3D take up, you get a completely distorted image. So 4D would be used for superficial structures. So if there's a cleft lip, you'd be able to assess that. So it's important to do 4D as well. Would and you I, say? I, I think so. And especially from a bonding aspect, the 4D is amazing. Mm. Um, so you can at least like more or less see what your baby looks like. Without needing that imagination. I remember so when Sammy did his 4D scan, he literally to me still looks like that to this day. It's like, amazing, yes. isn't it? Right, so what I'm looking at, when we first scan you, obviously check the bladder. We look at the canal coming in over here and your cervix. So this would be cervix coming over here. What we look at is make sure that the cervix is nice and long. Should the cervix be too short, moms tend to have preterm or go into preterm labor because baby's pressing on that cervix um, and then it just starts opening. So we don't want that. What they can do if it is too short, just put a stitch in it to keep it closed. Okay. But yours is nice and long, which is fantastic and closed. And Everything that's about important. me is nice and long. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> right, so there is only one. What we determine is how many there are. Make sure baby's in the right place, which this little sausage is. Then this is baby's heart beating. Do you see that? No. Oh dear. Oh, cute man. Just over there. I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. What is a normal heart rate? So anything between 120 and 160. That's almost cardio. <laughs> isn't acceptable no, it is actually cardio. <laughs> it is absolutely but in the early stages up till 185 wow that's is incredible it is it, and then obviously as pregnancy progresses the heart rate starts slowing down okay so then what happens is more important than the heart rate is the consistency of the beat so you would be able to let's have a look at that oh look at baby bouncing up and down so you can see it's a nice consistent beat 143 beats per minute there's one of those gender gender yeah, things yeah. where they say fast heartbeat being a girl slow heart being a boy yeah. not so much <laughs> no you know what baby's heart rates are like ours if we attempt yeah. to run upstairs our heart rate is going to increase yes. if we're sleeping our heart rates that decrease sounds quite silly i must it say it does yeah. so where is has baby just run a marathon is baby waking up nope right so as we said there is only one baby's in the right place which is fantastic baby's in a breech presentation which means head is on top bum at the bottom oh, still oh, cute still very early babies do they they pull my kisses and their tumbles um head needs to be down by 36 weeks um so absolutely fine and at what stage of the pregnancy can you tell different things about the baby. Okay, so scans can be done as as early as four weeks to determine that you are pregnant. We'd be able to see gestational sac. And then 
there are certain times in pregnancy that ultrasound is essential. Heartbeat can be seen at seven weeks. So that's when one can confirm viability of pregnancy. There's a 12 week scan um, between 12 and 14, 11 and 14 weeks. What they do then is measure the back of baby's neck, looking at the risk associated of having a Down syndrome baby. So 12 weeks is the, the NT scan, the nuchal translucency scan. That's where the back of baby's neck is measured, looking at the risk associated of having a Down syndrome baby. Then the big scan, the anomaly scan, that's done at 22 weeks, between 20 and 24 weeks. Um, so there's always a time frame where you can have that. That's where we count fingers, count toes, <laughs> doing some moves here. Yeah, no. We look at the lens of the eyes, the, the nose, the septum, the top lip, the brain, count, um, I said fingers, toes, look at the arm. So we look at, we look at measure the humerus, the ulna, the radius, the heart, the diaphragm, the stomach, all the internal organs, the diaphragm, um, the bladder, the kidneys, all the way down to the toes. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, Good. look at that Good. spine. So it looks like a zip coming over here. That's baby's spine yeah. all the way down to the bum. Ends nicely. Those legs are kicking. Look, do you see how baby flipped? Yes. He's going to be Olympian. <laughs> And Jerry can see the difference. Oops, baby's moving. We could see the diaphragm is a line coming over here. You can see the difference in color between lungs and liver. Yeah. Beautiful. And the heart is in the chest cavity. So there's um, no diaphragmatic hernia and that's looking good. And a beautiful nasal bone. You see that white mm. bone? There's a white bone right there. That's the nasal bone. And again, that's is also checked at 12 weeks okay. to exclude Down syndrome. Okay. So Down syndrome babies, their nasal bone is either foreshortened or non-existent. Okay, that's very interesting. And then um, just to be clear, with a scan, you can't determine 100% for sure if your baby is a Down syndrome baby or not. No, unfortunately not. What's a percentage? Oh, difficult to give a percentage. Yeah. Um, from a nuchal translucency, the only way to be 100% sure is to have an amniocentesis. An amniocentesis is when they put that needle in, draw some amniotic fluid, send it away for testing. It's a very sterile environment. They do anesthetize the area. Um, but there is a risk also that you might lose your baby if you do that test. There is, okay. although it is done on, under ultrasound guidance. So they do yes. have to tell you that there is a risk. But there is still a risk. Absolutely. Okay. Um, oh, look at those fingers giving us a high five. Oh, that's cute. Right. So obviously baby is still very skeletal, very normal. Baby's head over here with the brain inside. So you need to get the varsity application. Look at that. That's beautiful. So that's the hemisphere. Well, this is the separating the two hemispheres. These are the ventricles. So should any fluid accumulate within baby's brain, that is where it would take place. And there isn't any. And you can tell. You would be able to see, yes. And that's perfect. So head, head shapes, you get soccer ball shaped heads, rugby ball shaped heads. This is... Depends if it's a boy or a girl. Because <laughs> in my household, all the heads are rugby ball shaped. <laughs> so what I'm doing... Rugby house. <laughs> This is a biparietal diameter. We call it a BPD measurement. That's measuring from ear to ear, so across mm. baby's head. This is looking from the top down. And then taking a measurement around baby's head, like a hat size, the head circumference, the HC. What can you tell by taking these measurements? With these measurements, we determine how far pregnant you are. Um, so we do the head measurement, the tummy measurement, and the top leg measurement. Okay. The machine cleverly has a formula and gives us how much baby's weighing. 
and then it's always a good idea obviously to assess when baby's coming from preparation point of view but babies come when they want to they aren't born with calendars mm -hmm. in the third trimester there's a condition that can only be picked up or mostly picked up in the third trimester that's called intrauterine growth retardation it's or IUGR. That's when the placenta doesn't work as well as it should, or the umbilical cord isn't transporting all that oxygen and nutrients. Um, what happens then is you have your placenta on the top, placenta via the umbilical cord goes through to baby. What happens, it bypasses baby's liver, all that oxygen and nutrients, bypasses baby's liver and goes straight to baby's brain to keep the brain functioning. So you end up with a normal size head and everything else lags behind. Yeah. So the tummy will be smaller, legs tend to be shorter. Right, so baby's doing a bit of a boxing stance there. Yeah. So this is the humerus coming in over here. And then you can see the two bones, the ulna and radius, that hand nice and open, nice and relaxed. And that's often an indication of how mommy is during pregnancy. The more relaxed mommy is, the more relaxed baby so the is. So would be open instead of clenched. Correct, correct. Okay. They have found a correlation between stressed moms and colic babies. I thought so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So if dad wants his sleep at two o'clock in the morning, you're needing your back massages, feet massages, breakfast in bed, box of chocolates once a week, bouquet of flowers every Sammy second was an week. incredibly relaxed child. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Really de depends on how you are throughout pregnancy. Um, so hand coming right up in front of face. This is the classic leave me alone sign attitude already. <laughs> <laughs> Once the hair gelled and makeup sorted. Right, just wanting to take that last measurement. Just over here is all the umbilical cord. Do you see that? We can put color in it. And oh. you can see that blood flowing through there. Red and blue just indicate the direction of the flow. Beautiful. And also excluding umbilical hernia. Here is a foot. There's toes. The foot coming over there. This is the bum right at the bottom over here. Baby sitting right on that bum. And you see the foot. Let's measure that foot. So measuring from the heel to the row of toes, that's 1.3 centimeters, baby's foot. So they grow into their feet. The yes. feet grow quite quickly. They're generally about seven and a half centimeters at birth. Right. So Baby sitting right on that bum and that leg. There's the femoral thigh bone. So that's this white bone I've been trying to measure. Just over here. So according to all these measurements, you were asking about measurements earlier. We are looking at, sorry, just waiting for the computer. You're, according to this, you're 13 weeks and four days, and the weight is 73 grams. Oh, chef. Sure. Very yes. tiny, yeah. but all the measurements are correlating, which is fantastic. Perfect. I am going to go into the 4D mode. This, you have an anterior placenta. This is the top bit up here. Placenta, yours is nice away from the canal, which is fantastic. If it isn't, Moms need cesarean section. Okay. Um, the other thing about placenta is it, it often, you feel baby later yeah. in pregnancy. Placenta acts as a shock absorber, absorbing all that movement. Mm -hmm. So baby's kicking placenta rather than kicking okay. you. So don't go into a panic when everyone else is feeling baby. I'm definitely feeling it. Fantastic. Like, Good. Loud and clear. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. He's making his or her presence known. <laughs> Baby's obviously still very skeletal yeah. at this stage. Baby doesn't have that fatty layer underneath the skin. Both hands coming up in front of face. Baby's just got that neck. So there isn't a hole in baby's head. It's just the way the camera's cutting through. But we are having to go through that placenta, so it makes it quite tricky. Definitely.
definitely boxing. Showman. Okay. So I wouldn't send these pictures off to the modeling agencies <laughs> just yet. So at how many months are you able to tell the sex? Right. Gender can be determined as early as 12 weeks, depending on how baby lies. Mm. Um, and, and obviously with cord in between the legs, that makes it tricky as well. Makes it very difficult, which is exactly how your little <laughs> baby's lying. Those legs are closed. So how you determine gender, girls, um, they call it the hamburger sign. Absolutely horrible. It is horrible. Someone must have been really hungry when they came up with that term. So a toilet seat view looking from the bottom up and then you get the impression of three lines. Boys would, they call it the tortoise sign. So yeah. you'd have the scrotum being the, the shell and then the penis, the head. Um, and then often what we do is from the side, we can come from the side and girls tend to, it's difficult with that umbilical mm. cord coming there right now. But girls tend to be parallel. So they, they poke out a little yeah. bit, the genitalia, poke out over here and is parallel to the spine where boys tend to have a 30 degree angle upwards. Ah, mm. oh, look at that hand. Absolutely gorgeous. Looking very content in there, enjoying womb service. 90% of the times, mom's gut instinct is right when it comes to gender. I obviously wouldn't suggest they buy anything particular. Yeah. yeah, no. But baby's doing so well, growing nicely, bouncing around in there. Let's just take a measurement of baby from head to bum so looking from bum to head and we're looking at just over seven centimeters that's excluding legs yeah. look at the mouth mouth moving to see that yeah is he back chatting already <laughs> oh, his fingers absolutely gorgeous all right, so we're seeing the shoulder over here, the elbow bend, hand right up in front of that face. There's an ear, bit of the face trying to peep in there, the chest, the abdomen, the bum, and all that umbilical cord coming in between. Baby's playing hide and seek. That's good. Going to be his or her favorite game, but doing so well. Oh, look, it's so busy. That's beautiful. The baby's been knitted so perfectly. Not one stitch has been missed. Look how baby's turned. Absolutely gorgeous. Those hands coming in there. Does that make sense? Can you yeah, see that? Not an alien, I no. promise. <laughs> Cute. And look how baby's snuggling into this bit of placenta over there. So lots of comfy blankets, soft toys are needed. Mm -hmm. Doing well. Good. So again, according to all those measurements, we are looking at 13 weeks and, and four days doing well. Okay. Perfect. We'll have to do the gender another no time. Worries. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Baby has other plans. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to wipe it off for you. We'll pretend this is very good for the skin. <laughs> Anti-wrinkle cream, anti-stretch mark. Thank you so nice much. And sticky. Look how well this gel's working. Yeah. You need to tell everyone about the gel, only available here. <laughs> there we go, nice and sticky.